What you are looking at is the original ad for the Patriot 105 airbrush. The reason I'm showing you this ad is since the Extreme has come out five years ago, there have been some changes to the tip and the precision air control. What you see now is not necessarily what you will get when you buy one, but that is not showcased on Badger's website. Time to take a look at the airbrush itself. And as you can see, it comes in a cardboard box. And there's a reason for that. I purchased this airbrush during Badger's semi-annual sale. And during their semi-annual sale, you can pick up a nice airbrush for very, very cheap. However, you don't get all the bells and whistles like the hard case and some other stuff, which I don't care about. So I'm not going to subtract any points uh, for that from Badger. As you can see, the finish is really, really nice. Uh, very cool grayish color to it. And the, as you can see, the tip is different as well. I really uh, like the high roller trigger feel. And the paint comp is very smooth and polished. This looks very, very nice. Shouldn't have any problems there. Overall, great first impression. The first and most important thing to look for in an airbrush is quality. And what I mean by that is how well is the airbrush made? And the way you test that is to look at its parts. Are the parts well made or are they cheaply produced? Because a well made airbrush is going to last you, but a cheaply produced airbrush is the quality is not going to be there and it's going to break down every other day. And the way to test if it's well made or cheaply made is to disassemble it because when you disassemble an airbrush you will encounter problems it will tell you if this is a bad airbrush or not in this case the airbrush is great the quality is great now ignore the fact that i made a mistake and couldn't get the uh, lever out everything else on the airbrush is coming apart very nicely for more sensitive areas like the nozzle i prefer to use a rubber plier to remove them or at least get the process started. I do not like to remove them just with my fingers. You don't want to ruin the thread on those uh, those parts. So I recommend getting rubber pliers for uh, airbrush purposes as well. And if you notice, everything came apart really nicely. Everything seems to be well made on this airbrush. There was no issues. I've had cheap Chinese knockoffs and just this simple test alone, they do not come apart. Things will break, twist. The threading, uh, it just goes bad. And that's not the case with this uh, Patriot at all. Now, I recommend when you put it, uh, when the first time you disassemble your airbrush, when you got, get it home, um, when you reassemble it, use some uh, lubrication. And the reason is you have no idea how long this airbrush has been sitting. So it's good to lubricate everything to make sure everything works well. So when, when I put this airbrush back together, all of the parts I'm going to lubricate just to get everything in a nice good state for my airbrushing later in the video. Reassembling your airbrush also is a good way to see the quality of the airbrush as well because it should disassemble and reassemble with no issues. The parts should fit exactly as they're designed. And as you can see here, everything is coming together really, really nicely. So no issues, nothing is uh, creating any sort of problems. Everything is sitting exactly as it should. When inserting the needle, be very careful. Just slide it in, make sure the trigger is down. And the airbrush has a self-centering uh, needle mechanism. So just push it in all the way, tap it gently into place, and then tighten the nut. 
And what you can do is you can tighten the, the needle chuck right there to change the tension on your trigger. So if you want a stiffer trigger feel, you can tighten it and it will give you a more stiffer feel to your trigger. Or if you want a, non, a lighter feel to your trigger, don't tighten it as much and you will get a less tense trigger feel. Lastly, when screwing in your handle, I recommend putting the handle so it's facing up and down, not side to side, as it will interfere with your hand. And this way it will not. For the last part here, I am not going to install this small air cap. This is not a control valve. I am going to use this bigger, larger, uh, newer air cap valve that uh, Badger has introduced for these airbrushes. That small, which looks like the old air cap valve is not in fact an air cap valve. It is a plug. So it just becomes a normal airbrush without a air valve uh, intake into it. Second most important aspect of an airbrush is its performance. And we are gonna test the performance of the Patriot Aero right now. I am adding in six drops of paint to six drops of mixture formula. Going to use a stirring stick to uh, mix the paint and the back flush method to um, test if the paint is airbrush ready. I'm looking for chocolate milk type of bubbles. Just like those. My Mac valve is at the most closed position possible and my compressor is at 20 PSI. And even at the most closed position with the Mac valve, I'm getting really good paint lines. They're a little grainy, uh, which means I will, you know, at this level, you have to thin the paint a little bit more, but uh, it's, it's performing fairly well. And the trigger is just fantastic. I love this new trigger. It is allowing me to control the airbrush like nothing I've ever experienced before. I've never had this much ease controlling a airbrush in my entire life. Now I'm going to move the Mac valve into the medium position here. So now I have more air going in and you can see the atomization is much better and the panel lines are far more crisp and I just have much better control over the flow of the paint. And this is because the paint wasn't thinned enough for the lower pressure uh, at the start. Now I'm moving the Mac valve to the full open position. And again, really good crisp lines here. And I can get pencil, uh, level lines if I get in really, really close. But this is just fantastic. The handling is fantastic. Everything is fantastic. So coverage in a small area is not too bad, but you gotta remember this airbrush is only made for precise uh, detail work. It's not great for large area coverage. If you look at the large spray right there, it's just graining and it's not good. So definitely not made for large area coverage, only um, precise airbrushing, detail airbrush work. But for that, it, it's doing a fantastic job. I would not believe this was a 0.3 millimeter needle. And the cap there, I like the large cap because at some point you will have uh, paint buildup and you can just wipe it away with the brush very easy. Now the other good thing is you can remove this cap and screw it back on the other way, exposing your needle. And now you can get into your, uh, a little bit closer for even more precise work. And now I can get down to paint lines that are almost uh, the size of a hair.
Look at the level of control I'm able to achieve with this airbrush. Very, very nice. For modeling purposes, uh, this is as about as close as I normally get to my subject. Now, for artistic work, uh, they do get closer and you can get even finer lines than this. But I, I have never needed to, to do that, so... And the lines are super, super crisp, even with the cap turned around. Fantastic control overall. And the roller trigger just makes painting fine lines that much easier. You just get that much better control because of the trigger here. So you can see the needle is slightly exposed when you do that. And if you don't feel comfortable, just turn it around. And screw it back in the other way and there you go ignore my uh, clumsiness here and now the needle is protected and I can go about spraying and not worry about damaging the needle In reviewing the quality and the performance of the Badger, I gave it high marks in both arenas. I have not really talked about the price of the Badger, but I think it's really important to point out that the Badger 105 series, the Extreme or the regular, are both very affordable airbrushes. You can pick them up for very, very cheap prices. I was able to pick up two Aero Extremes for the price of $140 shipped. That is a fantastic deal. So when you look out for Badger sales, you can get some really, really good deals. Just keep that in mind. But another key important uh, factor of cost is replacement parts. Now, if you're able, if you need to replace a part, uh, some airbrush out there, the cost can be $60 just for a needle. With the Badger, you can get replacement parts for around $20, which is very affordable because replacement parts are going to add up at some point. I didn't really cover the feel of the airbrush because that's more of a subjective thing. I personally like the feel of the airbrush, but others may not. So I really can't judge uh, on that one that you'll have to pick up on your own and see if you like the handle and the feel of it or not. I wanna point out three things in this conclusion uh, about the Badger uh, Aero Extreme. First is the high roller trigger. I absolutely love this trigger. I have been airbrushing for 25 years, both models and as a professional for a company. And this trigger is a game changer. It really allows you to control your airbrush like nothing I've ever seen. Even people who are not comfortable airbrushing, fine uh, detail work will uh, be able to do so much better with this trigger because of the, of the design of the trigger. So I really, really, enjoy that. I'm getting a high roller trigger for all my Badger airbrushes because of this airbrush. Second, I really love the air cap. That design is fantastic. It allows me to do fine detail work without much paint build up. But if the paint does build up, I can easily clean it out with a, a brush. So really big fan. But I can also turn the air cap around and get in and getting closer for fine detail work if I need to. So that's a bonus. Uh, I don't see myself doing that a lot, but if I need to, really love that, uh, that design right there. Now there's a part of the Badger that I don't like, which is the air valve or Mac valve as it's commonly referred to. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a waste and I don't think it's the best design Mac valve. As a model airplane guy, I've never needed it in my entire life. So it's irrelevant to me. Uh, as a professional who's done um, airbrushing for uh, photographs, for companies, again, never needed it. Um, 
I've seen people in industry use it for to create effects, but nothing that translates to the modeling world, in my opinion. So to me, it's a waste. It's unnecessary. I don't see myself using it often. So it's, I mark it down a little bit for that. But overall, I think it's a fantastic airbrush. I highly recommend you pick one up.